Good morning. As you are aware at this point, I'm obviously not here. I am uh, at home with COVID trying to prevent anyone else from getting sick. But I am able to uh, share in this time through a mediated presence this morning in this video. And I want to talk to you just for a couple minutes about the things we have seen and participated in this morning about child dedication and about the needs in the foster care system and how these two really unite together in touching two of the great heartbeats of our relationship to children that are spoken on again and again throughout scripture. And we see in them the consistent message that parents, that the community is, is to aim to bring up children in God's ways. And that requires us as individuals and as a church to write God's ways into our own life. And as we try to engage with our children and the children around us, we will find again and again the need to be driven back to the gospel of grace as we fail, as we don't quite measure up. But we first will talk about raising up a child in truth and then embracing children with mercy. We see in Ephesians chapter 6, as Paul is kind of winding down his letter to the church at Ephesus, he addresses parents and children. And to, to the parents, he says, parents, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Discipline and instruction of the Lord. Well, well clearly what he has in mind there is the Old Testament standards of child raising which aimed, one, at, at the basics of keeping children alive and enabling them to become helpful and successful members of society. But it also aims at far beyond that. It aims at bringing them up into being part of God's family. And the most concentrated place where we see this teaching is what we've already read there in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Um, just a, a refresher. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Right, that's a good start. You love the Lord your God. But it's interesting that it then continues, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall bind them like a sign on your hand between your eyes. Write them on the doorpost. Okay, it's a, it's a pretty clear picture. These words should permeate your life. These words of scripture should shape you and should shape how you interact and should shape everything you do with your children. See, the biblical picture of children is not just to keep them alive, not just to help them have a career, not just to teach them skills they need for life. All those things are largely assumed and taught here or there and other places in scripture. But the biblical picture of parenting presses us beyond that to passing on the words of truth about God to our children. And of course, there's no guarantees. There's no guarantees that you will succeed in bringing up your child to be a wise, successful person in life in any way. And there's certainly no guarantee you will successfully pass on the values of the family of God. But we are to aim at that. In our lying down, in our rising up, it should be in every step of life, in the little and the big ways. Because after all, we are raising children of the king. We're not just raising up children for our own families, but we are to raise up children in hope that they will one day become members of the family of God and train them not just for our values of how you sit at the table and how you use your fork when you eat, but also train them for the values of the kingdom of God, of how we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourself. And that is going to be learned much more so by what you do every day than by anything that anyone will teach here at church. But of course, for those of us who don't have our own children right now or are not currently raising children, maybe that's our grandchildren, maybe it's other children we're involved in, we are involved in this project of bringing up children. So teach in word and in deed. And especially for those of us not currently raising children, consider this. 
the children raising up in our church right now, or your grandchildren, what are you doing to weave these words of truth into your life? The one consistent thing that's been found over the years is first, parents have the single largest influence of the spiritual lives of their kids. Second, kids who stay in church as opposed to leaving once they've left for high school. A consistent factor is they've had seven or more adults in the church that are not their parents who have a meaningful connection to their life. Who are you trying to be connected with? Because raising up children for the family of God requires the whole community teaching and instilling these values. So teach them. Live them. Call up your children, your grandchildren, children in the church to them. Now that's the ideal. That's the beautiful picture of what we are to be about well taken care of children and we're aiming to bring them into the ways of the family of God. But we've heard this morning about the foster care system and we've seen that this ideal breaks down in so many ways. What do we do to relate to the children when the ideal breaks down, when the very family structure that is supposed to be safe and secure and helpful becomes a burden and a difficulty in their lives? We are called to raise up children with mercy, to respond in mercy. In, in James, which we read earlier, we'll remind you of this. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Okay, first, religion. Often we use the word religion in a sort of negative sense, but the idea here is not negative at all. It's religion as a way of life and relationship towards God. And that's the, uh, an obvious concern for any follower of Jesus. How do I live my life in such a way that it is right and pure before God? So part of that involves this visiting, this visiting. And, and the idea here is not just showing up and saying hi. It's visiting with the aim of being helpful and who in particular? Well, today I want to focus on the orphan. We translate this orphan, and that's a fine translation, but, but a, a way to better get at it. The orphan in mind in this text is not necessarily someone who has no parents, but someone whose legal social protector is no longer functioning that way. So in, in the case of the Old Testament and the New Testament, that mainly meant their father was dead. And then they were now considered an orphan because their legal social protector was no longer involved in their lives. But we see much more often today right, that our orphans are, in, in many cases, these kids in our foster care system. right? With When one parent dies or the other, we don't consider that an orphan. Your other parent is still your legal and social protector. But, in, but once you've entered the foster care system, the reason that you're there is because your legal and social protectors are not functional in that way. So you are an orphan. You're, in fact, the very sort of person that James says the church and God's people should be concerned about helping. And why is that? Well, we read in Deuteronomy, as, as well as many other places, Deuteronomy 10, 18, that God is one who helps the fatherless. God's character is displayed in grace and love towards those who are helpless. And so the call to a pure religion, a pure, a right way of living before God as God's people involves visiting, involves seeking to help those who are helpless. Does that mean all of us here need to go out and become foster families? No, it doesn't. And for many of us, maybe that wouldn't make any sense at all. But, but are we aware, are we concerned with the needs and, and ways that we might be able to help? ways that we might be able to be like God in giving mercy to the orphan, to the fatherless, to these families in crisis, these foster families. The concern of God's people is not just 
to bring up children to be successful and healthy adults. That is assumed the goal of everyone. The goal of, of followers of Jesus reaches beyond that, to be successful, healthy adults who enter by faith into the family of God and to to raise up our children and hope that that is what's, what will happen and to, to direct them in those ways. And that really requires you and I to live in God's mercy in your actions towards your children, your grandchildren, towards foster children, towards anyone who is in need as we try to raise up these children. And we will find that we fail again and again. Sometimes we succeed, but so often we fail. And, and this whole endeavor must drive us back to grace and to the gospel so that our children learn to see that we aren't good because we try really hard, that we aren't good because we have it all together, but that we are striving towards Jesus because he continues to give us grace. And really in living out that turning back to God and grace in the gospel again and again is so central to God's call to parents. It's so central to God's call to the church as we try to raise up our own children within and visit those in need and help in the ways that we can. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for the gospel of Jesus, for the grace that you have reached out to broken sinners. And we can see in our children and in, in children in the foster system, we see the so many ways that brokenness permeates lives. And we pray that we would, we would grow in our skill at pointing through the brokenness to the gospel, to grace. Move our hearts to be wise towards our own children and grandchildren and nieces and nephews and whatever children be in our lives. Move our hearts to be compassionate towards the children in need in our community, to have the wisdom to know how we might help. And God, may you bless the endeavor as we seek to raise up children into the family of God. In the name of Jesus, our great older brother, through whose work we have been adopted into your family, we pray. Amen.